Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. Today I'm not in my usual habitats. <laughs> I'm on the baseball field at Radford University in Radford, Virginia. And what brought me here, and shout out to Damon Brightwell, one of my former students, who put me on this bird. There's a killdeer here nesting in the gravel right inside this complex, right next to the batting cage, right in the middle of where everybody goes in and out. Some kind soul put a few rocks around it and a uh, orange cone to protect it so people won't actually just step on it. Today's episode is about these amazing killdeer. They're sometimes crazy habits what they do and why they do it, and a little bit of background on this bird. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. If you know anything about killdeer, you know that they will nest in the most surprising places. And I just can't get over the location of this nest right here in the middle of the baseball complex at Radford University. This nest is located right outside of the batting cages, right in the middle of a connecting walkway. I mean, practically dead center. And when I appro first approached the nest, the bird, of course, did its typical behavior, which is to stay completely still, as if I cannot see him. And really, they do kind of camouflage into the background. When that didn't work, he treated me as a predator and drew me off the nest, all the way across the baseball diamond, past first base, where the bird decided I was probably far enough away now that I'd never find the nest again, and he flew off and scolded me with that typical killdeer voice. Of course, the name killdeer comes from the voice he repeats while flying over and over and over again. And it kind of sounds like killdeer. The killdeer is actually in the plover family which is a shorebird, and this is a wading bird. However, it can live just fine and does far, far away from any water source. It prefers flat areas, very closely cut grasses. So I think humans have created a perfect environment for it with golf courses and parking lots. It seems to nest pretty often in the middle of parking lots or even on gravel rooftops. You can identify the killdeer by its black and white collar, its white stripe above its eye, and of course you can identify it because he calls his name for you every time he flies. The scientific name is Charadrius vociferus, and I love the vociferous species designation, which in fact refers to its loud uh, and almost constant call. There are two groups of killdeer based on their breeding habits. One uh, breeds in the north and migrates south each year, and others will live in the same area year round. Here in this pocket in the Appalachians, we have a group of migrating killdeer that will come here to lay eggs and breed in the springtime and summer, and then fly south for the winter. The killdeer nest, and I use the word nest loosely, because it's really just a scraped out spot. And the males will sometimes scrape a spot here, scrape a spot there, and the females will finally give them approval for one spot or another. Both males and females will sit on the eggs, and I'm not able to distinguish between a male or female here. As you can see, this nest has four eggs, and they're speckled, I think, to try to blend in with a rocky background where they might be laid. The killdeer is probably best known as the ultimate actor. This bird should win an Oscar. Killdeer will feign a broken wing, or sometimes, like this one, two broken wings, and they'll jump away from the nest to draw the predator away and feign that they're hurt and flop around, show that orange tail, 
pretend their wings are broken, and then kind of keep drawing the predator away, away from the nest. And finally, it'll jump up, completely healed, and fly back cackling, kill deer, kill deer. <laughs> the kill deer is the most widespread of all the plover species, covering a range of most of North America. And they're conspicuous because of their behavior and their calls. Killdeer are mostly insectivorous, feeding on insects and other invertebrates. And they'll sometimes be seen following tractors cutting hay or plowing fields that stir up these bugs and they'll chase them down. It takes about 28 days for these eggs to hatch. And if it gets too hot, the female will shade them or the male. And sometimes they'll go dip themselves in water and cool the feathers and so they can keep the eggs at the right temperature regardless of the sunshine or heat or rain. Killdeer offspring are precocial, meaning almost immediately after hatching, within 24 hours, they're up and running. And so the nest becomes non-existent after that. And the offspring run and follow the parents into good feeding areas with some cover to protect them until they fledge, which is about another month later, and they can fly. So I found out from my friend Damon that despite all the activity and the mowing activities going around in this place, that these guys successfully hatched and he saw the fledglings running and following after the mother. <laughs> and I'm gonna go back down to RU and see if I can see them as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on kill deer and learned a little something about them. It's so amazing to be here right inside this baseball complex on the RU campus to see nature. Nature truly is everywhere. Nature is at your door. My channel's all about that. If you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave a comment. I love interacting with my viewers, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. 